beautiful people and welcome to my channel. My name is Jennifer Diamond and I live a whole food, plant exclusive, sofas free, gluten free lifestyle for health and well being. And today we are going to be making split pea soup. So I've been getting a few uh, people reaching out to me asking if I make split pea soup and how I make it and if I would share how I do it. So I thought, sure. Um, I do use several different types of recipes for split pea, but today I thought I would do my very favorite one, which is in the Chef AJ's uh, Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss cookbook and it is on page 192. She calls it green split pea soup with sun-dried tomatoes and dried mushrooms. Now I'm not doing it exactly how she does it, but most of it, and I'll let you know what I change up. So the first thing I wanna do is cut up some of these potatoes. Now you can use any potatoes that you'd like, including sweet potatoes or Hannah Yam potatoes or Japanese potatoes or russet potatoes or red skinned potatoes, Yukon gold, any potato that you want. I'm using a potato that is a Yukon gold and the skin is a thinner skin, it's a creamier potato and um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the skin on. If you're using a thicker skin, when it comes to making soups or things that are blended and in liquid, you wanna consider you know, the color of it. And you could certainly leave it in, on, but um, for like a russet potato, I would probably peel that. I think that it might change the color to more of a brownish or darker color, but um, whatever you decide. And actually, you could mix it up. So you could mix up a couple different potatoes. And I was thinking of doing that today, but ended up going this way. So I'm just gonna cut these. And the great thing about this recipe and most blended recipes is that you don't have to cut it up really. I mean, I'm cutting it up a little, but th the whole idea is just to put it all in, make it simple and then blend it later. And so I'm just gonna, this is kind of a raw chop you see, and nothing special about it, except that I'm cutting it down into smaller pieces. I'm going to be using the six quart instant pot because that's what I have. But if you have an eight quart or even a 10 quart, I think they make, this will be great. Um, if you have a, um, a three quart, then you probably would need to cut this into maybe two or three different soups, you know, cut the recipe down. So anyways, what we're going to do is we are gonna go ahead and add some of the ingredients. So right here I have carrots, fresh garlic, onions, celery, and some tomatoes. The original recipe calls for sun-dried tomatoes. I'm throwing in a handful of cherry tomatoes instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump all that right in my Instant Pot. You can make this in a slow cooker and um, it would just take probably six to eight hours and I think that's referenced in the recipe. But for me, I'm in a hurry because I want to eat this tonight. So I'm just going to go ahead and add everything in the Instant Pot and um, have it ready to go in just a little while. So now I'm going to add the potatoes that we cut up. There they all go in. And our superstar, which are these green split peas. Split peas come in different colors. You could certainly use yellow. You could use a combination of green and yellow. Or if you decided to use all yellow, you could pair that with a uh, sweet potato and then the colors would be really bright. I try to think about what the end result is when it's gonna be bright. So a green, a dark green, you know, how would that mix? Anyways, I rinse these off and the thing about um, split peas or lentils or things like that, they, they tend to clump up once you rinse them. So I'm gonna guess that, yep, look at that. They're clumped up and that is certainly okay. You wanna rinse them and make sure that you get any kind of rocks or any kind of, you know, 
anything that got in there that has nothing to do with eating and nothing to do with split peas. And there you go, I'm just gonna kind of break it up. And I got a few other things left to add. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add these mushrooms. These are dried mushrooms and they're a mixture of different kinds. And I'm gonna just dump those right in there. Now, this, this is the container and the name of the dried gourmet uh, mixed mushrooms that I've gotten, that I have, and I got these at our Costco. Uh, they don't always have them in our Costco, but I've had these for a little bit. And let me see if it, yes, here's uh, the types of mushrooms that are in here. It's the oyster mushroom, black trumpet mushroom, the portobello mushroom, porcini or porcini, I'm not sure. And uh, that's what it says. So these are vegan, gluten-free, and you know you could use these in all kinds of different things. Um, and so anyways, I just wanted to show you that. Also, the split peas. I really do enjoy split peas when they're organic. And um, I, I have a big, huge bag that we purchased uh, during COVID, actually. And it is not, unfortunately, organic. But I am still using it up. And so I just wanted to show you. It came in a paper bag. And it's just... Um, by this company, it was just what we could find at the time, but 25 pounds and you know, it, it's something that'll last for a long time. So don't be afraid to buy things in bulk, especially things like that, that can last for a long, long time. Okay, so I went ahead and put my, my uh, rosemary in my little pour, um, mortar and pestle and I didn't really need to do that, right? Because we're gonna blend it, but I like to. So I'm just pouring that in there. And then I'm gonna go over some of the spices that we have. And what we have in here is a bay leaf, which I'm gonna go ahead and toss right in there. We have some Benson's Table Tasty. I don't put as much as the recipe calls for. Um, you could put in any salt substitute you'd like. I really enjoy Benson's Table Tasty. I think they're a great product. They're family owned and um, they're gluten free and it's a, it's a salt substitute. So that's something you can consider. And I talked about the rosemary. We have also some dried parsley in here, dried um, or oregano, and I have some smoked Spanish sweet paprika, which I got from Savory Spice, which is a company that's also uh, does small batches and they are located in Santa Rosa, California. And I found them when I was water fasting. And so I bought some and had them shipped to my house at the time and I'm still enjoying them. And then lastly, we have basil. And the basil that I currently have is basil that I bought fresh at the store and dehydrated it. So I'm putting all those goodies in there. The thing with bay leaves for me is <laughs> I often forget to take them out. So you gotta remember when you put those in there, take them out. But if you forget, it's not gonna harm you. Um, okay, so it's pretty high in here and uh, it's at the max level, which is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and add the water. I went ahead and boiled the water. You just wanna bring really hot water in. Now, do you have to? No, you don't. What would be the reason to do that? Well, it just cuts down the time because once we put the water in the Instant Pot and close it up, it has to bring it to a seal and it has to get everything hotter. So if you start with hot, it'll just make it go faster. Okay, here we go. Wow, that was perfect. Now I um, measured out eight cups of water and I used my Vitamix uh, container and then I put it in there and that's how I got it. I'm just gonna take a little spoon and kind of mix it up. And let's just see how this is looking. Just kind of want to get the top seasonings and some of the stuff that's on here just under the water, a little wet. This fits perfectly actually because the max line is, um, here, let me see if I can turn it. So if you can see it, you can see 
on the six quart, the max line is up here, right here. So we still actually have plenty of room. I was a little concerned, but I feel pretty good about it. And it, it all looks good, so there we go. What I'm gonna do now is seal it up. We're gonna cook it on high for 10 minutes and let it natural release. Turn it and then make sure that you seal the vent. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, move it a little so I can see. We're gonna start and I'm gonna change it to 10 minutes. And voila, we're ready to go. So while that's cooking, I can make a salad and um, have that ready to go on the side. Some of the, there it is, telling us we understand what you want us to do. And so thank you, Instant Pot. Now you can serve this over any kind of rice if you'd like. You can add greens to it. Um, there are some suggestions in the original uh, recipe and and she says you can serve it over brown rice or yet yeah, uh, you could do millet, you could do quinoa, any kind of grain or none because we have potatoes in there already. Um, and then she talks about adding raw or cooked spinach or any other green and um, then there you go. Now I think because I have some sprouted broccoli that I sprouted that that's what I'm going to add um, maybe Maybe I would do some other greens as well. We'll have to see when it's ready. So we'll be back. So for whatever reason, my mic went out. And so I'm just gonna walk you through what happened next. As you see, the Instapot is showing that it's ready and I'm gently lifting the lid. You wanna make sure to put the lid over the pot so that any condensation will dump into the lid. And you can see that it is definitely steaming I'm gonna make sure to remember to take that bay leaf out and um, which was right on top, so that was easy to find. And now I'm gonna show you what it looks like right after I remove the lid. So you can see before we blend it, there we go. And everything has cooked up really, really nicely. There's lots of liquid in there. This is gonna be a great soup. Look at that, beautiful. And you can see the split peas off to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my immersion blender out so that we can blend this up and get a nice creamy consistent uh, consistency so that we'll be ready to have split pea soup. Boy, does this look good, I can't wait. So if you didn't have an immersion blender, you could definitely gently and carefully, because it's hot, put it in a Vitamix or any kind of high powered um, blender and blend it up that way. But this time I thought I would try the immersion blender. And I just am patient and gently going up and down so that it can blend well. But you wanna move it around and continue to blend it until it's the consistency that you'd like. So if you like it chunkier, then you know, don't go all the way, but just keep going up and down and um, at a speed that you feel comfortable with until it blends to the consistency that you want. And boy, this is making me hungry. Really looks great. It looks like it's just about ready. A little bit more got stuck in the bell Knowing me, I like every last drop, so I clean it off even if I put it back in. But I think this looks great. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. Yum. What kind of consistency do you like with your split pea soup? Leave a comment, let me know. Okay, so I have some spinach and some sprouts. Let me move this beautiful bowl, uh, Instant Pot, out of the way and get some bowls. And so you can certainly take some of the spinach or whatever the greens are and put it right into here and just let it soften. But I'm just gonna add some to the bottom of my bowl. Um, and I have some beautiful 
sprouts that I sprouted. These are broccoli sprouts. Sprouting is really easy to do. I have a video that I could link um, that shows sprouting and you can check that out. And then we're just gonna take some of this beautiful split pea soup and put it right on top of the greens. Oh my goodness. There we go, look at that. That looks and smells amazing. Nothing better than a nice warm pot of split pea soup. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of these sprouts on top for garnish. You can put tons more on if you want. And let me go ahead and get a spoon and try this with you. Oh my goodness. All right, let's give it a try. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, hot! Of course, we just cooked it, but wow, flavors amazing, soothing, beautiful, thick, rich. Um, I just, I really love this soup. Now, you could make any kind of lentil um, little bread or um, you could use kind of like a, a crouton made out of garbanzo beans, um, nan bread people make, and, uh, or just plain like me with some greens. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys decide to make split pea soup, whether it's your first time or you make it over and over all the time. I just uh, hope that you will try something different. Maybe add a green like the spinach or the sprouts. You could, um, of course, put it over different things like we talked about earlier. But regardless of what you do, thank you for joining me and um, don't forget to eat your greens. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.